On the 30th of December, on Garda Síochána, the Irish police, were called after a man assaulted someone in a supermarket in a suburb of Dublin. They followed George and Kencho, who they say was carrying a knife, to his family home. At the time, his sisters Gloria and Grateful were in the house. She was like, it's George. I opened the door. I'm like trying to talk to them, like, that's my brother move, blah, blah. They're screaming, they're shouting, get back, get back, get back. The door is closed. And then I heard the shots. George was shot dead on his family's doorstep. The Gardaí say they tried non-lethal methods first. What exactly happened is the subject of an investigation by Ireland's police ombudsman into whether excessive force was used. But the killing has exposed tensions in Ireland as a new, diverse community comes of age. And it's left many black Irish people wondering why the death of this black man called George hasn't led to a national reckoning. George was 27 years old. He was the eldest of his five siblings. George was somebody that I always describe as a protector. He played the big brother role incredibly well. You know, he had four after him. He made sure that everybody here was protected and well advised. Recently, he'd been suffering from mental health problems and his family had been trying to get him help. It's just a very lovely time. As a mother, like, uh, every day of my life, I don't think I can forget my first son. Fatal shootings by the Gardaí are rare. This was just the sixth in 22 years. The force is largely unarmed. But for you to shoot a child, not an animal, not an elephant, not a bull. One, two, three, four, five, six. What were you doing? In the wake of George's death, small protests broke out, calling for justice for George. His family appealed for calm. But human rights groups have called for a wider investigation to acknowledge concerns of perceived racial bias in the Gardaí. I think if there is a full and effective investigation, which is absolutely necessary in this case, it must look at the wider context as well. Uh, there are issues about the circumstance of this instance that go beyond the use of lethal force. They go to the questions about how some members of our community engage with the police, people from ethnic minority backgrounds, and also people that may be suffering from mental ill health. Blanchardstown, where he lived, is a sprawling suburb of Dublin city. In the past 20 years, it's become one of the most diverse communities in Ireland, a place where in the boom years, young families could find affordable housing. The Inkenchos had moved to Ireland from Nigeria when George was eight. He was obsessed with football and played at Insaka Glentoran FC, an academy set up to mentor young players from minority backgrounds. So uh, this lot here in the green, it's, uh, that's Tyosi Shitabi who was, who was murdered. And this is George Inkencho. It's, um, it's unfortunate and very sad that we lose two players from the same uh, team, you know, the same club. Uh, we don't want to lose any more. What you have to do, let the ball travel the running. When George was a teenager, one of his close friends, Toyosi Shitabe, was stabbed to death by a 39-year-old man in an attack where racist language was used. Toyosi was 15. Toyosi, they found that it was a, our um, academy was a sanctuary for them. We had uh, a dedicated uh, community uh, guard working with us all the time. Really, he was a patron of ours, and in fact, he would bring us out to the football games in the in the guard van in his uniform. And what uh, what was the difference when the guards were moved on? 
What did you notice? A huge slump, a huge um, uh, uh, fracture in relations between the, uh, the guards in, in Blanchetown, the local station, and the, the, the young lads on the street. So it's, it's a lot of problems and they're not dealing with them. The circumstances of these deaths were very different, but both have hit George's friends hard. We didn't think that would ever happen again. We're at this stage now, it's happened 10 years later. And in my head is like, who's next? For George's friend Israel, the team was like a family that helped him deal with racism on and off the pitch. I've been racially attacked many times, you know, um, and racially abused, like even going home or something like that. It's, it's, it was certain areas we couldn't go to, or even if our friend lived in that area, we had to help him get home safe. An EU report in 2019 found that Ireland is one of the highest rates of violence against black people in Europe, second only to Finland. Effective legislation on hate crime was only introduced this year. It's to become law by the end of the year. George was killed on the 30th of December, and in the hours and days after, disturbing content spreading misinformation and lies about him started appearing online. I was heartbroken, I sobbed. I, I couldn't sleep for two weeks, to be honest. Vicky Musitongo knew George growing up. After he died, she was involved in a group on the messaging app Telegram, calling for justice for George. We were ambushed in the group. A lot of racial slurs on pictures and photoshops, um, images of George's face and different stuff, a lot of really graphic things. God. These accounts sharing racist messages weren't just harassing friends of George. They started spreading lies about him in a very organised way. Um, so we tracked this information about George in the hours and the days following the shooting. The Institute for Strategic Dialogue tracked some of these posts. The lies were specific. That he had 32 previous convictions, he had none. That he'd assaulted his girlfriend and an old lady, also untrue. These were initially shared on Telegram, a messaging app popular with extremists. But they quickly spread to mainstream social media. The Guardi dismissed the rumours five days later, but they continue to be shared up to now. The aim of most of these campaigns is to stir up any kind of racial tensions that they can. George was really dehumanised. What his family have gone through since December. In early April, Guardi arrived outside the home of the Enkenchos again. They say they were following a car on suspicion of a breach of the Road Traffic Act and that as the scene became quite tense, a number of additional Garda units also responded. During the incident, George's mother was pushed to the ground by Gardi. Can they do this to an Irish? No. You killed a child right in front of his siblings, and you have audacity to come back again, and you knew this is the family that has been going trauma, a very huge trauma that will never leave me until I die. Why did you come back again? Mm. The Gardaí agreed to speak to us about the effect of George's death on community relations, but couldn't comment on his case or the incident in April. I recognise that, that George's death did have an impact on, on his community, but right across Ireland we are seeing um, a real change in the demographics of, of our society, um, and really that change has come about quite rapidly in recent years. Do you think that your officers are equipped to deal with this new diverse Ireland? I think we are. What we are doing, we already have uh, guarded diversity officers um, with 281 across the country. In 2019, we launched our diversity strategy, which included how we will engage with diverse and minority communities and also our response to hate crime. Do you think racial profiling is a problem in Angarda Siakona? No, I don't. And um, since I've joined Angarda Shikona um, just over a year or just under a year ago, I mean, I have never seen that. And is it possible for the Gardaí to know whether racial profiling is a problem when there's little or no data collection on ethnicity and interaction with police? 
I mean, that is a really valid point, and it's actually something that is outside our, our, our control. We would really welcome, and we understand, and would really uh, you know, appreciate the, the being able to collect data. But at the moment, we don't have the legal framework to do that. Unlike the UK, Ireland has no system in place to record ethnicity in interactions with the state. Ireland is in denial about racism and, and, and so, you know, quite plainly in terms of international law, we are delinquent in not outlawing racial profiling and in keeping our heads in the sand as to its existence. The Department of Justice told the BBC that racial profiling is not a feature of policing in Ireland and that the question of the recording of ethnicity in Garda interactions with the community is one which must be considered by Angarda Siakona. This has to be one of the biggest blemishes in the decades to the Gaidi to shoot dead a young person with no history of criminality, just history of mental health struggles. The Nkenchos have concerns about the investigation, that George's sisters weren't interviewed as witnesses until weeks after he was killed, and that despite obligations under EU law, they feel they're not being kept well informed about its progress. They met the Minister for Justice in April and held a press conference after, at their home. There are things that show I'm supposed to know. I, I'm supposed to be calling along everything they are doing. It is in the law. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I'm no. not a lawyer, I but I think, I believe, so. I believe they're supposed to live with me and ask me questions and I'll be able to give well, them. They say they've given okay. a family liaison okay. officer. Are you okay. happy with Hold that? On. When GSOC say their investigation is independent, why do you not feel it's independent? It is our expression due to our experiences, not yours, and not anybody else's here, sure. but my family. But this I'm just trying to get to the bottom of why you think they're not because independent. Because of what they we, say they are. Because they can say they are. You can say a lot of things, but if we are experiencing something that is different to our reality, we have a right to voice it and to yeah. challenge it. As the family faced repeated questions from one reporter, a neighbour stepped in. The TV crew back down here, when why aren't you up doing it outside your new house? Pardon? Because we still live here, that's why. You don't still live here, do you know? This is where the incident happened. Would you please not disturb us? Please not disturb us. For George's family, and many in the black Irish community, the reaction to his death has been especially upsetting. Um, George Floyd died in May of 2020. The protest in Ireland and the black squares and all. Seven months later, George and Kento died. And what were we getting? Go back to your own country. And for them, the stakes are high for the outcome of the investigation. It's not clear when that will be. Well, I fear the outcome of quite a lot. And what are you worried about? I'm worried that we're not going to get the justice. You know, I'm worried that this is going to happen again in a different scenario. Um, I'm worried that now kids are going to grow up with that mindset towards the guards.